Welcome to Facts for Real Videos. The Black Sea region's political stability is at risk from everything from the biggest offshore wind farm the world has ever seen to a highly contentious canal. These are Europe's five megaprojects. The Stad Ship Tunnel, at number five, costs $272 million. There is a marine area off Norway's rugged coasts that many sailors avoid at all costs. The Stadavet Sea, which is said to be the meeting point of the Norwegian Sea and the North Sea, is one of the busiest shipping lanes in the nation. Due to erratic winds and weather, the region has a reputation as one of the most hazardous seas along the coast. Historians have established that even the Vikings preferred to drive their boats across the land rather than sail across these seas. Even now, many people still believe that the Stadavet Sea is a dangerous place for even the most seasoned sailors. In fact, most ships these days wait days for the waves to settle down and allow for safe passage. The Norwegian Coastal Administration designed what would become the first full size ship tunnel in the world to make traveling through this area safer. Travel times could be cut by up to two hours thanks to the Stad Ship Tunnel, which would fully skip the perilous Stadavet Sea and go straight through the Stad Peninsula. The tunnel will be 50 meters broad, 36 meters high, and 1.8 kilometers long. Up to 120 ships can be accommodated there each day. When finished, the Stad Ship Tunnel will be the first of its kind in the world, enabling the passage of cruise ships in full size oil tankers. The project received Norwegian government clearance in 2021 with a budget of more than 272 million US dollars. The Stad Ship Tunnel is anticipated to start construction in 2024, and it is anticipated to be finished in 2026. Number 4 Project to expand Frankfurt International Airport, $5.7 billion with up to 70 million passengers passing through each year. Frankfurt International Airport is by far the biggest and busiest international airport in Germany. Frankfurt International Airport is not only the busiest passenger airport in the nation but also the busiest freight hub in Europe, carrying more than 2 million tons of exports alone last year. A $5.7 billion expansion project was started back in 2005 to upgrade the airport's infrastructure and boost the airport's passenger and cargo capacity due to its significance as a key European transportation hub and the steadily increasing number of passengers each year. One of these initiatives was the enlargement of the airport's oldest terminal, which added 800 meters to the building's length and made room for seven additional wide, body aircraft stands. When it was finished in 2012, this expansion alone increased the airport's capacity by more over 6 million passengers annually. The construction of a new, 2.8-kilometer runway that spanned from east to west in 2011 was another project that significantly altered the structure of the airport. This extended runway made simultaneous landings possible, greatly expanding the number of aircraft the airport could accommodate. Finally, in 2015, work on a brand. New third terminal began on a piece of property south of the runways. A U.S. airfield had stood there, but once the installation was shut down in 2005, the airport took control of the land. The construction of the new Terminal 3 cost more than $1.1 billion and is anticipated to boost the airport's capacity by up to 19 million passengers yearly. The COVID-19 pandemic caused delays, and the new terminal is now anticipated to open sometime in 2026. Istanbul Canal, 10 to 15 billion dollars Istanbul, Turkey, is one of the most strategically placed cities in the world, being at the intersection of Europe and Asia. On either side of the vital Bosphorus Strait, which links the Black Sea to the Mediterranean and the other oceans of the world, the city is constructed. More ships sail through this natural river than through the Suez and Panama canals combined. Despite being entirely within Turkish borders, Turkey does not economically gain from the strait. This is due to the Montreux Convention, an international agreement that Turkey joined in 1936 and which governs its application. Number 3. Hornsey 3 and Amp 4. $19.2 billion We are using a stunning 3D size comparison animation for this movie, as you have undoubtedly already observed. We received assistance with this from our to the top partners. Be sure to follow their channel if you want to see more content like this. Now, though, we go on to Hornsea 3 and 4. The United Kingdom is the world's second largest producer of offshore wind power, just after China. In fact, the nation is home to four of the top five largest offshore wind farms in the world. 
the Hornsea Project's one and two wind farms, which are the second and first largest in the world, respectively, are the most renowned of the four. Both Hornsea 1 and 2 are situated 80 kilometers to the east of the English coast in the North Sea. These two wind farms produce 2.6 gigawatts of electricity altogether, which could power 3 million UK households. Additionally, the wind farm will occupy 870 square kilometers of land, or about half the size of London. Nevertheless, despite the massive size of the nation's offshore wind farms, which generate up to 14 gigawatts of total electricity, they are still far from their target of achieving a combined capacity of 50 gigawatts by 2030. Because of this, plans are currently being made to construct larger and newer offshore wind farms across the nation. One of these wind farms, now under development and scheduled to be completed in 2027, is Hornsea 3. The project will be constructed on a 700 square kilometer area to the east of Hornsea 1. When completed, Horn C3 will employ 230 different wind turbines to produce 2.8 gigawatts of electricity. Number 2. Denmark's Energy Islands. $30 billion keeping with the subject of offshore wind farms, Denmark has experience with the technology. In fact, the nation hosted the construction of the very first offshore wind farm in history, which helped to advance the technology. Denmark currently produces the highest percentage of its electricity from wind power at close to 50%. The Danish government intends to undertake the greatest construction project in the nation's history as part of its effort to further enhance its clean and renewable energy sources. Denmark plans to construct the first, ever energy islands by 2030, which will link the nation and its neighbors to huge offshore wind farms. Two sizable offshore wind farms will make up Denmark's energy islands, which will be situated in the Baltic and North Seas, respectively. A man, Made Island will be built in the North Sea part to serve as the region's hub. Once complete, it will have a total capacity of up to 10 gigawatts, which is sufficient to power 10 million European homes. The second hub will be located on the Baltic island of Bornholm, which has a 3 gigawatts capacity. When finished, the energy islands might enhance Denmark's ability to produce wind energy by a factor of 7. The project's construction is anticipated to start as early as 2024. Number 1. Route E39 in Europe. $30.6 billion navigation has long been challenging due to Norway's coastal terrain, which is exceedingly rocky, steep, and divided by thousands of tiny islands. This issue is addressed by the European Route E39, which offers a straightforward route down the Norwegian coast. However, even with the E39 in place, the issue of building a continuous road down the entire Norwegian coast is not resolved by the one. 300 kilometers long route. This is due to the fact that the E39, despite being labeled as a single highway that runs from Denmark all the way up to the middle of Norway, is actually made up of numerous portions that span significant amounts of water. Travelers would need to take seven different boat connections to drive the full journey, which would take at least a day. This is going to change, though, as the Norwegian government intends to reduce the 20 plus hour journey in half. To do this, they intend to fully do away with all necessary boat connections. This will be accomplished by avoiding the water crossings along the route with a series of tunnels and bridges, essentially establishing a continuous route from Trondheim, Norway, up to Aalborg, Denmark. Thank you for watching, and we will see you in the next video.